Recently, we've had a number of questions related to reporting services, and a couple of different viewers have asked about how to compare columns in a matrix. In the previous answer video, we looked at how to compare one specific column against another specific column in the same matrix. And in this follow-up video, we're going to look at how to compare one column in a matrix with the previous column. To get started with that, I've already created a blank report, and I've created a data source to connect to my movies database. Just to take you through the basic setup of the data set, I'll right click on movies and choose to add a data set. I'll call this one films. And then using the query designer, I'm going to pick every column from the certificate table. We'll use that to create some row groups. And then from the film table, we'll select the runtime minutes field. We'll use that to create our aggregates, either a sum or an average. And then I'm also going to pick the release date field, which we'll use to create some column groups. Just to reduce the amount of data I'm working with, I'm going to apply a filter to the data set as well. And I'm going to base this filter on the release date field, use the more than or equal to operator, and then set the value to 2010-01-01. I can then hit OK to create the basic query. It's not the release date itself that I'm particularly interested in. What I'd like to do here is just make a quick modification to that field. I want to add the year function around the film release date and then create an alias for that column as release year. So I'd like to create column groups based on the year that the films were released in. Having done that, I can click OK and there's my basic data set created. Now let's add the basic matrix to display those results. I'm going to right click into the body of the report and choose insert matrix. And then in the rows group, I'm going to select the certificate ID field first. So that will set the grouping and the sorting for that field. Then I'd just like to change what gets displayed rather than show the certificate ID, I'd like to show the certificate field. For the columns group, I want to select the release year and then I don't need to change anything about that. And then for the data cell, I'd like to select the runtime minutes and then rather than showing a sum, I'd like to display that as an average. So I'll select the sum expression, right click on it and choose summarize by AVG. Having done that, I'd like to apply some number formatting to that cell. So I'll select the cell and then from the number format drop down list, choose number. That will just make sure we get two decimal places rather than the large number of decimal places we'd ordinarily get. And then I just want to quickly make sure I don't encounter my font rendering bug where not every value in the matrix will get displayed when you first run the report. So I've selected all the cells and I'm just going to quickly change away from the default font and then back to the default font just to make sure I can actually see some text when the matrix gets displayed when we run the report. I'll just tidy up the formatting of these columns a little bit and then if we run the report we should see a basic matrix showing our simple data. Next, I'd like to use the previous function to return the previous value for each cell in the matrix. Just so we can keep an eye on the original values though, I'm going to copy the original matrix and then paste it in side by side with the first one. Rather than showing the average runtime then, I'm going to right click on that cell and choose expression. And I'm going to wrap that existing expression within the previous function. So I'll just wrap the previous function around the existing average runtime minute. So the final expression looks like so. Having done that, if I click OK and then run the report again, we'll see that we have changed the values shown in the matrix. You can see that the, the U certificate films show no values whatsoever in that row. Basically, all of the other values have been shifted down one row. So the PG films are showing the value for U, the 12 films are showing the value for PG, and so on. So we have technically returned the previous value, but it's the value for the previous row, not for the previous column, which is what I wanted. If we want to get the value for the previous column, we need to specify the scope for the previous function. So back in the design view, the default previous function is using the previous certificate group. I want to return the value for the previous release year group. So I need to know the name of that group. I can see it here, it's release year two. If I right click on that expression and choose expression, in between those two close round brackets at the end, I can specify for the second parameter of the previous function in some double quotes the name of the previous group, so release year two. So the final expression should look like so. Having done that, I can click OK. If I just move the position of that matrix to make things a little easier to read, I think. When we run the report again, we can see that now we've shifted everything along one column to the right, basically, rather than one row down as previously. 
rather than just showing the value for the previous year, it would be more useful to show a comparison with the previous year. So I want to take the value for the current year for that certificate and subtract from it the previous year's value. So to do that back in the design view, we can go back to the same expression, right click, choose expression, and then I'm just going to quickly copy the average runtime minutes value function, and then place that just after the equal sign at the beginning of the expression, and then subtract from that the value for the previous year. If we click OK at that point, and then run the reports again, we'll now see that we're showing the comparison from the previous year. So if we have a very quick look at the Universal Films for 2011, we'll see that those are 11.75 minutes longer on average than films from 2010. And if you have a quick look at the actual values displayed there for those two years, that's looking pretty accurate. One thing to be slightly careful of when performing this sort of comparison is that blank cells or nothing will be treated as a zero. So looking at 12 rated films in 2015, it appears that there weren't any of those. So here we get 151 minus nothing or minus zero. So the end result is positive 151. We've got the opposite problem for 18 rated films in 2016. Here we've got zero minus 168. So the end result is minus 168. If you wanted to exclude either or both of those situations where either the current value is nothing or the previous value is nothing, we can use an if function to get rid of those. So back in the design view, we can right click on the cell containing our expression and choose expression. I'm just going to take the current expression down a couple of lines. And then at the beginning of this, this expression, after the equal sign, I'm going to write an if function. So IIF, open some round brackets. On the next line, I'm going to use the isNothing function to check if the average runtime for the current value is nothing. So we can just copy and paste the average fields runtime minutes dot value into the isNothing function. Then we can use an OR operator and check again using the isNothing function if the previous value is nothing. I'm just going to change the width of this dialog box so we can see hopefully everything on one single screen here. I'm just going to copy the previous function and then paste that inside the round brackets for the is nothing function. At the end of that line, I'm going to type in a comma. And if either of those two conditions are true, I want to return nothing as the result in the cell. I can add one more comma. Otherwise, I just want to return the result of the expression we've already calculated. I just need to close one more set of round brackets. We might just about be able to see the entire expression. There we go, something like that. Having done that, we can click OK and then run the report again. And this time we're going to see blanks where there was either no previous value to compare with or no current value to compare with. You can use this same technique when you have multiple column groups in the same matrix. And to demonstrate this, let's add a new field that will allow us to break each year into four quarters. Let's head back to the design view first, and I'm going to right click on my films dataset and choose dataset properties. And then in the select list, I'm going to add a new column using the date part function to calculate the quarter for each film. So I'm going to use the date part function. And then in some round brackets, we can specify that we're interested in the quarter of the film release date. I'll give this an alias as well. We'll call this one as release quarter. And then once we've done that, we can click OK to update our data set. Now that I've done that, I'd like to include that release quarter as a new column group in each of our two matrices. I'm just going to give myself a bit more space to include this extra grouping. I'll add it first to the original matrix. So I'll take the release quarter field and drag that into the column groups box and drop it just be below the release year. Then I'll do the same thing for the second matrix if I select that one first and then drag the release quarter just below release year two. If we head to the um, to the report view, if we run the report, we can see that each year now has been divided into four separate quarters. Now at the moment, our expression is still comparing each cell with the value for the previous year. So if we take a look for the second quarter of 2011, we've got a value of plus eight. And that's generated by taking the value for quarter two of 2011 and subtracting from it the value for quarter two of 2010. So 106 minus 98 gives us eight. 
we've got the exact same result for quarter 3 of 2011, but that's generated by subtracting from 103, 95. If we wanted to change this expression so we're comparing each quarter with the previous quarter, then we just need to change the scope that we're referring to in the previous function. So if we head back to the design view and right click on that expression, first of all actually I better check what the name of that group is. If we select that cell, we can see that its name is release quarter one. So I'm going to right click on the expression cell, choose expression, and then we can just simply update any reference to release year two to release quarter one. So let's get rid of year two and replace that with quarter one and then do the same thing down here and replace that with quarter one. Okay, so having done that, we can click OK and then run the report again. And then we'll see this time we're comparing each quarter with the previous quarter. So the minus three here for quarter three of 2010 is generated by subtracting 98 from 95. Just to finish off this example, I always think that a bit of conditional formatting helps to make this sort of comparison table a lot easier to read. So I'd like to change the font colour depending on whether it's a negative or a positive number. To do that, let's head back to the design view and I'll select the cell containing our expression and then from the properties window, find the font colour property. If I hit the drop down list there and choose expression, I can then write an if function to check the value of the cell that this expression belongs to. So I can say here equals IIF, open some round brackets. And then the simplest way to refer to the value of that cell is to take a shortcut of referring to me dot value. This just saves us having to replicate the entire expression in the conditional format. I can then type in a, a less than symbol and check if that's less than zero, followed by a comma. And then if that's true, I'll use the tomato color. Otherwise, I'll use the blue color. You can use any combination of colors you like. So the final expression looks quite simple like so. If I then hit OK and then run the report again, I think the entire thing is a little easier to see what's going on. It's much easier to see we have positive and negative numbers. So there we go. There's the basics of comparing columns in a matrix with the previous column or with the value for the previous group. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.